to ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show dedicated to startups, technology and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Shrikan joining you from the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in Hyderabad. In fact, uh, the show this evening is uh, dedicated to the second day of the GES 2017, which in terms of scale and scope is one of the biggest events India has seen. Uh, nearly 1,500 people from uh, over 130 countries, 170 countries, very diverse uh, set of population and more importantly, 50, um, over 50% of the participants here are women. So a lot of discussion around diversity, innovation, entrepreneurship and also an opportunity for India to showcase its entrepreneurial energy on a global platform. But uh, the second day of GES also kicked off with a power-packed panel uh, that had the likes of Ivanka Trump, Sherry Blair, uh, Chanda Kochar and a top executive Dell EMC as well, uh, talking about how uh, organizations can make it uh, better for women to have it all, the steps they need to take to ensure that women have it all and do not fall out of the workforce. The session was moderated by Telangana IT Minister KT Rama Rao. Uh, here are some of the ex excerpts of this panel on Startup Central. I was very fortunate to be part of an organization that has always been a merit-oriented organization. And that gave all of us the comfort and confidence to say that if even as women, we put in hard work, we'll be recognized for the work that we put in, we'll be given the next promotion or the next responsibility based on your capability and will not be discriminated against just because you were a woman. Uh, well, beyond that, I think, you know, it's about the woman himself or herself in that sense. Because, you know, I have seen that women are actually sometimes even more capable and more intelligent than the boys that we recruit. I agree. I completely agree. <laughs> but at the same time, we tend to give up when it's the most difficult time in our life stage, which is when we are starting our families. And I think that is the time when women need to decide not to give up. Karen. Chanda represents the Indian corporate sector. She's an Indian woman who's made it right to the top and she's worked her way through. How different is it in the United States? You've worked prior to Dell at multiple organizations and you've been with Dell for the last 17 years. As I've mentioned, you're the top most ranked women uh, you know, in, in, in uh, Dell right now. How difficult or how easy is it in the United States or the first world for a woman to reach right up to the top and to do what you've been doing? Well, first of all, I, I agree with everything that she said in terms of, of what it takes to, to um, be successful. The, the confidence that you have to have in you and your capabilities and what you can do and what you can enable, I think, has a huge impact. And I couldn't agree more on when you reach those difficult times and you feel like giving up is when you actually have to stay the course because as a, as a mother of three, two of which are daughters, it's unbelievable how much of a role model you can be as a successful woman in helping them and their friends and the larger kind of community and being, being successful. So Sherry, how difficult was it to be in the limelight and also to have your own career? And I'm sure there must have been a fallout, there must have been a few issues that emanate from it. So let's talk about it uh, and how difficult is it again to be in the spotlight again and to fight it out through your own career? Why would I change my job just because he had changed his? Now this did cause Absolutely. This did cause some consternation in, in, in Downing Street because they basically expected me to be there to be the, the, the hostess and the support and to be wheeled out on the, the uh, occasions when it was required. And I did all that, by the way, but one of the things that enabled me to carry on with my career actually was IT. Because because by the time I got to um, Downing Street, I was able to conduct my business through from Downing Street. So I might be dealing with my legal papers, I might be answering clients' queries from my desk. My client would not know where I was, nor would they know that possibly half an hour before that, I'd been down greeting the First Lady of Tanzania to have tea with her. Uh, now, I couldn't do that. Uh, without IT and that made a huge difference to me. My question to you is how can a government 
be it the United States or India or any other province in India or across the world. How can a government ensure that we do more in terms of policies for bringing in more women into workforce, ensuring that they're skilled, and also how can we work with the private sector in ensuring that we give her a larger share to women? We need to start thinking about ways to support the modern workforce and the modern reality of dual income households. I think technology is a great driver of entrepreneurship because a lot of women are leaving and saying this doesn't work for me and it's emboldening them to go out on their own. Uh, technology is reducing barriers to starting new businesses. It's creating flexibility around schedule. So you work, can work just as many hours or more, but maybe you work some of them after you've put your child to sleep sleep from your living room or from your kitchen table. So I think technology offer, offers tremendous opportunities to women and women entrepreneurs, and we're seeing that in terms of the explosive global growth and domestic growth we're experiencing in, in the United States. But, but going back to, to public policy, um, I think it's incredibly important we have policies that support the modern working family. After hearing out those super achievers on that panel, I hope it inspires a lot of working women not to give up when the going gets uh, tough and uh, hopefully organizations too will do everything that it takes to retain uh, women professionals. But moving on from that uh, to the big voice that we have on the show today, uh, he is clearly the architect of the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, someone who's played a crucial role in putting this mega event together. We're talking about Telangana IT Minister KT Rama Rao. We caught up with him to really ask him about uh, the broader impact of this event, uh, what it will mean for entrepreneurship. More importantly, is Hyderabad steadily stealing Bangalore's thunder as India's startup capital? Here's what he had to say. Well, this is a very unique opportunity, not just for the state of uh, Telangana and Hyderabad, but for, all, for also the rest of the country in India. That's why no less a person than Honorable Prime Minister himself was here to inaugurate the event, because I think it's extremely important for us to realize that the top companies, the top notch, uh, the top Fortune 100 or, uh, or the Forbes 100 uh, companies, are the large ones are going to stagnate. Between them, there is not going to be much mm -hmm. employment created. You know, one's going to create and one's going to downsize. So between them in total, there's not going to be much happening. So the next wave of job creation is going to happen from the startup world. And uh, we are betting big on it. In fact, as a state, where we already have an innovation policy in place. We actually have the largest incubator in the country here, T-Hub. And uh, I do believe that with this event happening, with Global Entrepreneurship Summit happening here, especially with focus on women entrepreneurs, I think, I think, a lot of aspirational value for young Indians who are here in terms of networking with people from more than 140 countries, in terms of just uh, talking to possible mentors who are, mm. who, who are from mm. all over the world, mm. learning and understanding their travels and uh, the journey of a successful startup. So all of this is really going to catapult mm. uh, Indian young entrepreneurs onto the world stage. And I do believe this is a fabulous opportunity. Is this going to be a big driver for you um, going forward in terms of economy, revenue? And do you see that shift happening where technology talent, software talent is making a beeline to Telangana, to Hyderabad? Well, not just to Telangana and Hyderabad. Like mm -hmm. I said, I think we obviously are definitely mm -hmm. leading from the front today. And in, not only in terms of policy making, but also just in terms of creating a conducive mm -hmm. environment for startups to thrive. We've been doing our bit. But I think the rest of the country also, in fact, needs to elevate its game. I'm not uh, boasting that Telangana is doing something, uh, you know, which the rest of the country is not doing, but certainly we are ahead. But the fact of the matter is, as a country, we still have a lot to do. As a country, in fact, while Government of India talks about a startup India, skill India, and all these things, mm -hmm. we need to have a very comprehensive and a cohesive, uh, uh, you know, uh, policy, which creates a wonderful environment for any young startup, mm -hmm. any youngster, to be able to just come in, walk in with an idea, and walk out with a product. Mm. 
You know, Ivanka Trump mentioned yesterday that Hyderabad's uh, uh, reputation for technology and innovation is perhaps going to outshine its biryani. So, um, uh, what can we expect in the days coming forward in terms of tangible outcomes from this mega event? Well, firstly, I would sincerely hope that Ivanka is right because I do <laughs> want uh, our, uh, I mean, I, I don't want people to talk about uh, uh, many other things other than biryani. And if uh, tech prowess of Hyderabad is going to be talked about, then I'd be the happiest person. But I think the larger outcome of this event, like I said, is going to create a brilliant platform for many, many Indian youngsters in terms of just being able to reach out to the many, network, many, many people that they network with. In fact, we've done series of events called Road to GES. Mm -hmm. I've requested the CEO of Niti Aayog to also do a road outside of, you know, to, as a follow-up mm -hmm. to the GES mm -hmm. event so that there is a, a, a staunch follow-up on all the conversations and all the uh, interesting elements yeah, that we've picked up on. Through. So that mm -hmm. we ensure, again, that most of these things are taken to a logical conclusion. I do sincerely believe, I do mm -hmm. sincerely hope that uh, with many, many other events coming up, this event has created a great deal of buzz, positivity around India, mm. around Telangana and around Hyderabad. I do believe uh, that we can sustain it. And if you are able to sustain it, it will definitely, the intent will translate into investment. Right. Finally, sir, um, I'm from Bangalore, so I can't help but mm -hmm. ask you, um, has Hyderabad effectively now sort of stolen Bangalore's thunder when it comes to Silicon Valley of India or Startup Hub of India or Innovation Hub of India? Is Hyderabad getting its due perhaps because of the GES? No, I'll, I'll tell you what. In fact, I love mm. Bangalore. In fact, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Bangalore, honestly. We'll because be happy if you get in. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, we don't mind. It's, in, it's after all in India. But the point is, I think Bangalore has to an extent saturated in terms of uh, the kind of growth mm. it had over the last two decades. So. It is now the newer uh, uh, areas. In fact, Bangalore is still leagues ahead of us mm. on a number of counts. But for the, for, but but like I said, I think large scale employment is going to come from the innovation industry, from the startup industry, and I think competing. We are not just competing with Bangalore. Right. I think Hyderabad or Bangalore today is competing with the rest of the world. Absolutely. So we have to realize the competition in India is not among states. Mm. We are competing today with uh, you know Hong Kong, Singapore, and there mm. are several mm. other tech destinations True. across the world as well. So in terms of innovation, we are competing with countries like Israel, you know, w which seem to come out with uh, uh, brilliant innovations and brilliant startups. So it's a combination of all this. And I think uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad, in fact, have it in them to complement each other, to actually work together on a lot of counts. In fact, we could pick sectors that uh, we actually are strong in, focus on them. And then, in fact, I think together we could give a lot of people a run for their money. to get you two leading voices from the Indian startup ecosystem to give you a sense of uh, the participation of women when it comes to entrepreneurship because in terms of the numbers it's still dismal the number of uh, uh, women uh, ventures led by women the number of women in technology uh, we caught up with two voices on this uh, Vani Kola a leading investor the uh, head of Kalari Capital as well as Sanjay Sethi the founder and CEO of Shop Clues an e-commerce unicorn listen in to what they had to say you know, I was so pleased when I first heard about this, Women First, Prosperity for All. I thought it was a great uh, theme and very apt and timely for us to talk about it. And what I really love is the whole conference more or less has been about confident women who are willing to mentor, give back, and who are inspiring. And rather than see hurdles in their path, they see opportunity ahead for them. So this has been a very inspiring and uh, moving, in mm, fact, mm. Uh, conference for me. Mm. But anything specific that really needs to be done to, you know, keep this conversation moving at a time when there's so much of discussion on the global stage? I mean, U.S. is full of stories on Weinstein and Hollywood and media and everything. Uh, anything else that needs to keep the conversation? Chandra, Chandra, you know, you know my uh, wiring, my nature. I'm a more inclined to look at positive than the negative or the sensationalism, right? Because that can trap you, what says uplift you. So I look to uh, that uplifting messages, uh, not to ignore the, you know, realities either. But I think that one of the topics here that we have been talking a lot is about mentoring and the networks, hmm. right? If you have the right networks, can you overcome whatever it is sooner? Do you have to maintain this uh, s 
silence for uh, decades? Could you have the courage to speak up sooner, nip the problems in the bud? Why did this mushroom, the Weinstein or whatever uh, phenomena, mushroom to such uh, proportions uh, over decades, right? So could we build strong networks? Could we build uh, quiet mentoring? Representation of women in uh, Indian startups is very poor. Of course, I am doing our, we are doing our part. Radhika is uh, one of the leading entrepreneurs. Um, you know, when we compare it to Silicon Valley, I think there is a lot more to be done. But uh, we have come a long way. You know, 2011, that's when I started here, Shop Clues. And today, um, I see, you know, the second generation of entrepreneurs coming in, a lot of women coming in. And uh, boardrooms still are fairly deficient of women. I think it'll take a while. But you know, if you don't do things like these, I don't think it's going to change anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm very hopeful. So you think platforms like these make an impact, a tangible impact? So you know, it, nothing will change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I was just, uh, you know, Radhika was talking to me uh, this morning, Vani Kola. She meant... Uh, In fact, we met her as well. Right, so yeah. I just yeah. an episode, this is her story. She met with John Chambers. And she said, you know, in 1994, you made a speech, or was it 84, I don't remember. But there was a ripple that he created, and Rani is, uh, Rani is an outcome of that. I thought it was so fascinating. You know, it takes decades for events like these to actually show results. Um, so of course, I think I'm very, very hopeful of this. Right. Talking about the overall e-commerce um, ecosystem, um, Sanjay, in terms of business, where are we today? Um, is the worst over? Or you know, when it comes to demo, have, have things improved business-wise? What's the sense you're getting? So yes, I mean, uh, see, DMO was a big impact for a business. Um, you know, we realized it uh, in hindsight. You know, while we were through this, uh, you know, we were just managing every day. But you know, when you look back, we see a quarter of business being impacted. But it has bounced back. GST was another one where, where you know, small businesses, just through the confusion of getting all of these things done, you know, were, were impacted. But I think we are over that too. Right. So, uh, the, I would say the, the train is back on track. I am hoping that uh, it'll move much faster now. Right. Um, one aspect that people are talking about is, you know, the consolidation in market share that we're seeing between Flipkart, Amazon, and now, of course, Paytm is getting big money from uh, SoftBank. Where does it leave a player like uh, ShopClues? So, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you're right. Actually, in last, um, I would say, two years, see, none of this was unprecedented, frankly, or unexpected, rather. It was expected that, that you know, uh, uh, consolidation will happen, uh, people will start lining up and uh, so I still believe and I have, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an optimist guy, uh, I still believe, you know, when you look at these numbers, mm -hmm. it is just, these are mind-boggling numbers and I don't think uh, we're anywhere close to the finish line, we're just very close to the starting line actually. So yes, I think all of this money is expected will come in. As far as, you know, how we, it impacts us. You know, we still continue to be very bullish about tier 3, tier 4 and this actually is so amazing. Um, and I think uh, we still continue to be the largest player in the tier 3, tier 4. There's so much room for all of us to play and uh, we'll continue to play this game. After investors and entrepreneurs, time to get you a leading voice from the U.S. government. Uh, Thomas Bider, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South Asia, someone who spent many years in India as a Consul General of Mumbai, uh, spoke to us about what the Global Entrepreneurship Summit means um, in terms of bilateral relations and how does this really tie in with immigration policies uh, considering we are seeing so many countries becoming insular and protectionist and the tangible outcome from the GES going forward. Listen in to what Thomas Vaida had to say. It was the President and the Prime Minister who announced that the co-hosting of GES when the Prime Minister was at the White House in June. And it's a natural fit, we think, because it's an illustration of the strong strategic partnership that the U.S. and India have together. And also reflects the fact that innovation, entrepreneurship are an important part and a hallmark of both our societies. So, great opportunity for us to come together showcase our bilateral relationship, but also help promote entrepreneurship and economic growth and job creation, really not just in our two countries, but around the globe. Mm -hmm. And what message does this send out in terms of the cooperation we can expect from India and US going forward, uh, be it you know, in the area of innovation or entrepreneurship? What's the larger takeaway from the Global Entrepreneurship Summit? 
So I'm I'm struck by really the the excitement and the dynamism that's yeah, on the display here. As well. It really is amazing, and you know a lot of not just young people, but people of all ages that have got these great ideas, and mm -hmm. this creates a platform for them to learn from each other, maybe identify funders and investors to be able to grow their businesses. And I think that's important for the United States. It's important for India. We both want to obviously have job growth. We both want to create opportunities for our societies. But as I said, we want to have broader impact and, and so promote some of these same principles overseas. Right. Um, interestingly, you know, this talk of cooperation and bonding is coming at a time when the world is increasingly turning insular when it comes to immigration policies. And this is not one country, but, you know, we're seeing this across continents because people are worried about jobs, um, a lot of prote protectionism kicking in in various geographies. So how do you see, you know, immigration policies tying in with this um, in the scope of bilateral relations? Yeah. So it's really hard for me to say. I mean, the, for example, with regard to temporary workers, the so-called H-1Bs, so that right. the, you know the president has asked for a review That's right. of this of the of the of the system and look for ways to reform it. But really, it's you know many of these changes might require legislation, and so it's really hard to predict what Congress might do. And it's not really for me to speak to legislation. But I think regardless of where the outcome is. There's a commitment in the United States to continue to build this economic partnership with That's India. Right. We see benefits really on both sides. There's a lot of complementarity. I had the I had the benefit about a week and a half ago to be in Detroit when with the chairman of Mahindra who opened a new That's manufacturing right. facility. Mahindra, I even tweeted about it. It was the yeah. first it was the first automotive manufacturing facility, Greenfield, in that part of south, southeastern Michigan in twenty five years. So huge impact in terms of the local economy there. And again, a great illustration in my view of the benefits of really in the cross fertilization when, we, when our companies are work together, when our two countries and governments work together. Right. Um, finally, on the lighter side, what are you personally looking forward to from Hyderabad during this week? Yeah, well, I've already had some wonderful biryani, so oh, I think you I... You take the spices. Yeah, no, it was great. Well, I, from Mumbai, I built up some tolerance <laughs> after three years, so yeah. I'm better than I was. It's just, it's, I'm seeing a lot of, I mean, there are obviously a lot of people, business people in Mumbai, so I'm actually connecting with a lot of old friends and acquaintances, so it's really been a pleasure. On that note, then, we come to the end of this edition of Startup Central, but coverage on GES continues tomorrow. Stay tuned to ET Now, follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more updates.